Omar Alvarado of theparadiddler.com, the blog for all things drumming. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have a special interview, something that I haven't done before because this is a blog about drums. But, as we all know, a drummer doesn't usually play by himself many times, or practically every time. He's playing in a band. And, obviously, there's a lot of things that make up playing in a band. Um, if we're talking about rock, for example, you have the guitar, the bass, possibly keyboards, and the drums. So I wanted to take a different slant, a different perspective, and present that to you guys, the viewers. And today we have a special guest. He's someone that I've known for 41 years, well, basically all my life. Um, he uh, has a very great guitar collection that I wanted to present to you, and he has a few interesting stories about them. And that was basically what I wanted to do, is to bring another aspect of music that is not just about drums, but it's about the other aspects as well. So, with me today is Chris Alvarado. How are you doing, Chris? Greetings, Omar. It's good to have you here. Good um, to have you here. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, there's been you know, a lot of things that we've discussed over the years, obviously, and there's a lot of things that you haven't told me, because you always have something new. Every time I come visit you down here in Florida, um, this is a new story, but we'll get to your guitar collection in a bit, uh, which is quite impressive, and there will be a lot of pictures of his guitars up on the website when this interview is done. But um, Chris, why don't you tell me a little bit about um, how you got started playing guitar and what inspired you initially about sure, it? Sure, sure. Interestingly, so um, I actually didn't start on the guitar. I was actually a, a saxophone player. Uh, I played saxophone in um, in my elementary school days. And I did have a cousin that grew up in uh, around that hippie era, you know, late mid '60s to late '60s in New York, and he was a very, um, very avid folk guitarist. And um, and he would come over to our house. He's our our older uh -huh. uh, family member, and you know, I would watch him. I, I liked, I loved my saxophone, but I actually loved to see him playing guitar and 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 how how much fun he he, he had actually playing. And he, you know, you saw the fun that he was having. And I'm like, I want to have that kind of fun also. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that inspired me um, to actually pick up the guitar, which I did one day. I actually went and bought a guitar, a classical guitar. Uh, I worked hard, bought it myself. And um, watching him, and voila, all of a sudden, next thing I know, I put the saxophone down. Sorry, sax. <laughs> and I started playing. I actually started on acoustic, uh, a classical guitar. Yeah. So, but I do remember that at least when I was younger, you were in a band, I think it was in middle school, you were actually the saxophone player. Absolutely. I was, Did yeah. you want to play guitar? Oh, oh yeah, I mean, there was, you know what, my friend that played the guitar, he just looked so cool. And all the girls liked him too, so, I, and I was playing the saxophone, so I, for some reason I didn't think it was that exciting. I, I had lots of fun playing the saxophone in the band, yeah. and uh, I remember, actually the song we were playing, Do You Think I'm Sexy by Rod Stewart, I, I, I did the saxophone part to that. and. Uh, but you know what? The guitar has got all the girls. And at that time, I was young, single, and, and I'm like, I want to be like him. <laughs> Plus, a re family relative inspired you to play as well, besides wanting besides, girls. Besides, you know, the rock, you know, the old rock stereotypical, why you want to play music. Um, actually, I really enjoyed watching him play. And, and um, to the point that I started off singing with him, just joining him just to sing with him. And then he said, hey, why don't I teach you a couple chords? Yeah. And you can... You know, play along with me. And that's how it all started, basically. Okay, so over time, you know, you got into it more. So what styles of music most interest you or, or maybe come more easily to you, what you like to play? Well, you know, I, I know you'll appreciate this. Uh, growing up in, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, we were big uh, Kiss, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Aerosmith, uh, uh, Rush. We are I mean, that's what we grew up listening to. Although we are, uh, uh, our parents are from the Dominican Republic, and they're used to a lot of different type of uh, of guitar playing. That's more of a, of a Latino, not you know, not Mexican, not that kind of um, mariachi, nothing like that. More like finger picking guitar, using classical guitars. Um, you know, we, we 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 were exposed to that, but we were actually, you know, we were drawn to the actual classic rock music that you know we grew up in the '70s. Uh, uh, you know, in the whole that decade of the '70s. Mm -hmm. So. Any particular guitarist? Um, this is a loaded question. I know. Is there any particular guitarist that 
Uh, you were inspired to play guitar, but was there anyone in particular that like, wow, I, I want to play like that, I want to learn that style of play? Or, well, you know, at that play? stage in my, in my life, I, I was uh, happy that I could play any type of guitar or imitate any of those artists because there were so many great artists that, that were playing at the time. Somebody like uh, Eddie Van Halen and Joe Perry, um, oh wow, the guys from the Eagles, you know, or Glenn Fry or Joe Walsh, I mean, I mean, I think the list... Ace Frehley was one of those. Ace Frehley, I mean, you know, who couldn't forget Ace Frehley, his, uh, all his uh, lead and his solos that, that he would do. I mean, there were just so many great guitars, and, and when you say it's a loaded question, it really is, because there's so many different musical genres that we're, we like, and we can pick a song and a particular guitar piece that we're like, wow, that's, that guy just hit it. Yeah, and that happened a lot. I mean, we... <laughs> it's embarrassing to say as kids we used to role play um, the bands of Ki the members of Kiss and you know what before there was rock band we were rock band we did air guitar <laughs> air drums I mean that existed before all, all of this electronic stuff we were already doing that yeah, as kids that's true well um, so now you know you weren't ever in like a professional band and that kind of thing you know a lot of us we you know we play with people we know, you know, the kids at school and maybe some acquaintances afterwards and in work and that kind of thing, people we get to know. Um, so you ended up playing with drummers, being a guitarist. So from your perspective, you know, every person is different as far as how they feel, how important they feel, uh, the, their feel is towards the drummer. What about you personally? You extremely feel? important. I mean, drumming is timing and timing is everything in music. I mean, uh, some of the, the best songs that you've heard or some of the best musicians, um, it's not necessarily the content or, or how much content you fill into a particular time slot, it's, it's the quality of that content in that time slot. And you have to co coordinate that obviously with the other members of the band. And, and the drummer, I mean, the drummer is what keeps you, the drummer and the bass, I mean, those are the two, if you notice, that those two are always for some reason, you know, together. Yeah. And, the, and the guitarist is always watching them and saying, oh, let me keep up with them, making sure that, I, you know, my knees or my rhythms are in, in tune or in time with, with uh, the drummer. And recently I've been playing a lot in Bogota, Colombia. And, um, and that's, that's become even more, as I get older, that becomes more and more important. And, and I understand the value of having a drummer that knows what he's doing and, and he's keeping the time because that's what keeps the music going. It's interesting you mention that because um, a band like Yes, for example, from my experience when I listen to them and I hear um, a drummer like Alan White, who to me is a drummer who he's very good, but he kind of steps back, he lays a foundation, and pretty much Steve Howe and whoever the guitarist, they pretty much do whatever they want because they have a foundation that's there. So you as a guitarist, if you feel like the foundation is there, you know, drum and bass, then you're free to... You actually yeah. learn to depend on that foundation. You ex once you have that foundation, you're expecting to have that foundation so that you can do or be as creative as you want because you already have the foundation there. And, you, and you're counting that that foundation is there and gives you the freedom to do what you want. Right. Okay, Chris, um, let's talk about your guitar, your guitar collection a little bit. Um, yeah. Like I mentioned previously, I'm going to put a bunch of pictures on, on the site when this interview is posted. But um, I'm always impressed that <laughs> it seems like every time I come down to see you, there's a new guitar, there's a new story. It, it, uh, you don't just buy a guitar. There's always something behind it. <laughs> so, um, that is so true. You know, how, how is it that, um, you know, why so many? <laughs> well, I like to compare it. Uh, I particularly, believe it or not, I have six kids and two grandsons. And you know what? They're all different. They all talk different, they all behave different, they're different. I got news for you, all my guitars are different. They all sound different, they're all made of different woods, they have different pickups, they might have different strings. Literally, I, I mean, I, I like to think that I, I have a guitar that covers you know, all different types of music, at least sound-wise, or, or come close to imitating some of, uh, some of the different types of uh, you know, very famous guitars and, and the sounds that they have. Um, so yeah, that, yeah. I mean, you know, some people they'll use one guitar and you know they they feel fine covering, um, you know, many different musical styles. I I just um, happen to like guitars. I mean, I, I like seeing them. I like how they're all different. I like how they all sound different, and they all feel different. Yeah. And 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 that that's something that I really enjoy doing as 
as a guitarist and I'm at the stage where I, I can, you know, part of being a guitarist and having gear is being able to afford to have the gear. I've been fortunate enough to be able to, to afford and fiddle with, with different types of gear. And let's talk a little bit about the gear and we're going to get back to mm -hmm. some of the guitar stories. Sure. <laughs> there, there's some interesting ones. Sure. Um, uh, I saw that you have some gear and there'll be pictures as well of that. Um, how do you, do you have a particular brand or how do you kind of select your, your gear? Well, um, you know, I do a lot of research. I'm not, um, although I have a major respect for all the major brands like, you know, Gibson, uh, Fender, uh, PRS, I, Ibanez. I respect all those guitars, but I, I, like to, I like to go a little bit beyond and, and be different, be a little bold. Maybe um, try a guitar make that not too many people are using, and maybe modify that. Um, I really hate modifying Gibsons and Fenders because you know, obviously they have a particular sound that you, if you, usually you buy one of those guitars because you want that particular sound. Right. Why change it? Why muck around with it? Um, but if I buy a, a, a guitar that's not very well known but has good solid wood, has a good sound to begin with, that gives me the ability to fiddle with it and, and really de redefine the tone and the characteristics of that guitar. And, and as, a, as a person that has a lot of guitars and collects them, I kind of like the ability to do that, to take a guitar and just change the character of it. Yeah. So we're going to get into that. And there's one other thing I want to ask you about. What about the um, amplification um, and, and some of the effects that you use? You know, sure. Is there anything you want to mention about how you choose that or what maybe what you look for when you get that kind of thing? Well, I, I actually have various amps. I have, um, I have uh, a Black Star, this new 40 watt. HT Club Black Star. I have a PV Viper, the tube version. I have a Bugera app, and and what I like about those all those particular, I, I have a new Fender Mustang, very nice app also. Um, what I like is they're all different. I mean, it, whatever sound I need to cover, whether guitar guitar wise or sound wise, amplification wise, I pretty much have it covered. And um, I, I personally like the flexibility that that, that I can do that. Um, I mean, I could just choose one particular app and always play with that particular app and really define my style. But unfortunately, I'm not that famous, so I kind of enjoy trying to tune in or tweak in the, the sounds for you know a song I may be playing or a particular artist and guitarist that I'm trying to to imitate. Um, do I have my own sound? Yes, I do. I do, and, and I have a particular app um, that I like to use. But um, you know, basically, I just like the ability to, to be able to cover all the different sounds and, and, you know, actually be able to cover all the different sounds. That leads me to another point then. Um, now that you have your guitars and you have your amplification and whatnot, when you're by yourself, not, now you're not with a band, um, how do you like to, not necessarily practice, but, you know, when you pick up a guitar or when you go to your room and you look at what, what moves you to p pick a particular guitar at that moment? Like, Sure. Know, that's, that's, that's a good question. Actually, it depends on, on the song. Depends on the song that I that I feel like playing. I'll think of the song. I'll think of the artist. The artist. And I'll think of the 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 type of guitar he may use and the type of amp he may use, and and that's how I pick which guitar I'm going to play, and you know which amp I'm going to use. And the other thing we didn't talk about were pedals. Um, you know, there's there's always this this big debate whether I should use. You know, everybody should use individual pedals or all a pedal that you know multi effects pedal I, well you know what I have both <laughs> so for those people that you know like one or the other if you come to play with me I got you covered I have both um, and again it all depends on the song the type of sound that I'm trying to to, to dial in um, you know I, I don't have to worry anymore because I have both a multi effects obviously multi effects for me um, it's just it's easier you know you pretty much have the the, the tone or the, the sound already defined, you hit a, you know, a pedal and you're on, or you hit a button and you're on, and the individuals, you know, you, there's more tweaking involved, but that's fun also, that has its place, and um, I like both, which is why I have both, depending on, you know, depending on what mood I'm in that day. <laughs> yeah. That's how it is with me, and, and when I sit behind the drum kit, um, I tend to be one that not necessarily practices rudiments. Um, um, I do on occasion, but I, when I practice, I like to play to a song because to me, it's just more fun. It makes it more fun that way. Um, if, I, if a song moves me, you know, either, I mean, like you said, when we grew up, you know, listening to Rush and Kiss, and I mean, I'm really into classic Genesis now, uh, Phil Collins. Um, 
not a practice to that kind of thing. And those songs include all all of those things, the rudiments, the fills, and the creativity behind that. So Absolutely. that's that's how I pick them as well. Absolutely. If I like the song, I play. I yeah, play that. And, and you know what? I'm not famous enough that I need to be defined by a particular sound. Uh, nobody so far has said, hey, that's Chris Alvarado playing that song. That would be nice someday. We all strive for that. Um, so I, you know, I have the ability to really fiddle with a lot of equipment. I, I like fiddling with equipment. That's fun to me. It's fun to try different guitars, to try different apps, try different pedals, multi-effects, individual. That's something that I enjoy doing. And, um, and you know, I've been very fortunate that I do have the ability to, to actually purchase this equipment and fiddle with it. That's great because it makes it interesting for me every time I come to see it. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the guitars themselves. Sure. Um, I've made a, a big deal about the stories behind them. And, you know, yes, there are some that you've just bought just because it looked nice at the time, but like I mentioned, there are things that are behind them. Um, let's talk about this one that you have cradled in your arms right now. What's the deal with this you, one? You know, before we start, I do want to give a shout out to my guitar tech friend, designer, uh, Lupier, however you want to call him. His name is uh, Mitchell Weissman. He's, uh, he's been my, my partner in crime in, the, in the really uh, you know, putting together a lot of these unique guitars. Uh, and, you know, something as simple as this, one day we were just bored um, we have different parts of different guitars, just a part here, a part there. He had some parts, I had some parts. I had some pickups that I, that I really liked, and we slapped it together. And the outcome was just phenomenal. I mean, this is what I call my ugly duckling Strat wannabe. But this guitar, the sound is just phenomenal. I mean, I can, I can get that anywhere from a Strat sound to a, a telly chicken scratching tone from this guitar. And um, it, it's... And I took it to me. I took it with me to Colombia, and I met some famous musicians. And I remember playing in a club one day, and the musician said, "Hey, I'm going to be recording this week. Can I borrow that guitar?" Mm. He's like, "Please, I want to borrow that guitar. I just love the tone." And I'm like, "But it's not very pretty." And he's like, "Who cares? It sounds divine." I'm like, "Here you go. You can use it." So it's not always look. It's feel. It's sound. Uh, it's how the woods all come together. How the strings and that and the pickups. How, it, it's how it all comes together at the end and what sound you get out of it. And again, it's not a very attractive guitar, it's really not, but it just has a tone that, that's just attractive to guitarists. guitarist. Is there anything like specifically that this guitar includes maybe, I don't know, the, the way the pickups are arranged or the wood of the neck, is anything? It's, it's just, you know, I was able to, we were able to pull parts from different, um, uh, just different manufacturers. Uh, this, for example, the, these pickups are, from a company called GFS, a lot of you know guitarists might know who they are. Um, yes, they're not Seymour Duncan, they're not uh, uh, Demazios, they're GFSs, but they happen to be phenomenal. And we, we kind of slapped these together, uh, they're dual rails, and we also put a coil tapping, so that instead of um, in, in parallel, you can get them in series. So the, the, what, what this gives me the ability to do is have, I mean, like nine different variants, uh, varieties of sounds. Um, instead of this being a three, toggle switch is a five. So five and then being able to split the pickups, I just just the variation and, and sounds that I can get out of this guitar is just pretty unique. It sounds really cool. If I'm lucky, I may get him to play a few chords on some of these so you can hear them. But we'll see we'll see how that goes. But that's a great story on that one. So that that's this one. I, I, I just what, what I like about my guitar collection is I actually have a story for each, each guitar. Right. It's just, I just didn't go to a store and just buy it and say, okay, that's it. I usually tweak all my guitars. Um, I, except, like I said, if I buy a real Fender or a real Gibson, I'm leaving those alone. I'm just not touching them. Which is why I like to buy off, you know, just off-brand guitars that I can, I can fiddle with. If I don't like the sound, I'll change the pickups. Don't like the, you know, uh, don't like the strings, change the strings. Don't like the neck, I'll oh, keep the body and maybe change the neck. You know, those are the things that you can do with an off-brand, least expensive guitar that you definitely, children at home, don't do that with a Gibson or a Fender because you're gonna spend a lot of money. Unless you have the money, then knock yourself off. <laughs> Great, let's go to the next guitar. Okay, let's talk about, this is a, uh, hold okay, this one. Hold this, one. this is a, uh, <laughs> For all you that are looking at this guitar, if you see, this has an actual Gibson 57 uh, humbucker in the sound hole. It's like, this is a Yamaha, um, 
I believe is an AX, yeah, APX500, Yamaha APX500, acoustic electric. And you're like, why the heck would you want to put a humbucker in the sound hall? Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Talk about having different guitars with different like uh, musical, <laughs> yeah, musical sounds. There's a type of music from the Dominican Republic called bachata. Yeah. And bachata is, um, it's, it's a very old type of music. It's very, um, I don't know, like a Reinhardt, uh, you know, I don't know. It's very it's, organic, acoustic. Yeah, very almost gypsy-like. Yeah. Um, and the, the sound that they, they are playing now these days is obviously it's electrified. And some brilliant guy, whoever it was, decided to put a, 50, a 57, Gibson 57 humbucker in the, in the sound hole and voila, it's stuck. And almost any, anybody that plays bachata guitars, this is what they use. So I, I went to my uh, guitar tech, Mitch, I said, Mitch, I want this sound. And I did my research and I found out you take a Yamaha APX500 and you put <laughs> this in the, in the sound hole. And that's how I got this guitar. So, you know, it's ended up, it started off as a... Just a you know a Yamaha PX500, and look what we have. We have a, a bachata guitar. So for all your bachata enthusiasts, yes, it's a Yamaha PX500 with a 57, a, a Gibson 57 humbucker in the sound hole. So that's how I got this guitar. <laughs> right. So okay. again, that's so you you ask why you have different guitars. Well, yeah. obviously I can, I can if I take a regular you know acoustic electric acoustic guitar, I'm not going to get this particular sound that I need to get for that particular type of music. So thus the guitar has to be different. Right. This one, this story I really like. Um, I'm going to let Chris talk about it more. Oh yeah, this is my cheap steak story. I could, I could be a cheap story. steak, yeah. <laughs> so I was reading, uh, as you know, Rush is one of our favorite all-time bands. And, uh, um, you know, Alex Lifeton. I mean, he's just a phenomenal guitarist. Sure. I mean, he's just well known. I've seen him a few times. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he's had his, you know, he started off with Gibson's. I remember he said he, he likes ES, Gibson ES 335s. He started playing in the late 60s. And, um, and then somehow, you know, he's used different guitars along the way. Uh, not too long ago, everybody knows he was using PRSs. Now he's gone back to Gibson Les Pauls. Uh, but he did something very unique to a Gibson Les Paul. Is he had a Gibson Les Paul design with a Floyd Rose on it. And not only a Floyd Rose, but I believe it has an, an acoustic, uh, some type of a, uh, acoustic bridge also. Um, and you know, I, I saw, I read the article, I saw the guitar, and I was like, wow, when I grow up, I want to have one of those. And then I looked at the price tag, and I said, well, it's going to take me a while to grow up. <laughs> it's not, you know, very uh, economic, but you know, economical. But if you know, if you have the money, hey, go knock yourself out, go for it. It's a nice guitar. Yeah. Um, so I said, you know what? Um, how can I come as close as I can, under my means, to come up with a similar guitar? There happens to be a guitar that um, many might know. It's, they're called Agiles. There's a, um, I have to give a shout out to the website, rondomusic.net. Um, I have a lot of Agiles. Their guitars are made in Korea, but they're very, very good quality guitars. I, I, you know, I, they have a good foundation. We're talking about foundation. They're, they have the foundation that I like in order to customize. So I saw that they had uh, a guitar that kind of sort of looks similar to the one Eric had. Uh, I mean, Alex Lifeson. And um, it's, it's basically a mahogany body with a solid quarter inch maple top. It's got an ebony um, fretboard and it's got a Floyd. So I was like, wow, it's got, it's got the foundation I need to get as close as I can to, <laughs> to, to his guitar. And um, the only thing I did was change the pickups to have pickups that uh, that were more, um, it sounded more like what, what Alex's uh, pickups might sound like, what I've heard. Um, so again, I went to uh, GFS uh, pickups. I, I won't tell you which ones. <laughs> but I, I did put in some GFS pickups in here. And this guitar just turned out to be phenomenal. I actually have had some musicians in South Florida try it. And they couldn't believe it. They, they're like, how much did you pay for that guitar? And they're like, uh, I just bought a similar, to, you know, actually I have one guy that said, I have one of the newer uh, Alex Lifeson guitars, and he's like, he was just amazed when I told him the price. Actually, he probably, I think he wanted to beat me up, but I ran <laughs> out really fast. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 you know, you can get the sound that you want out of a guitar, and, you know, within your means. So, you know, it is possible to do. Yes, it's not a Gibson, yes, it's not a Fender, yes, it's not a PRS, it's, it's none of that, but... 
there's no reason why you can't have fun doing what you want to do within your means. And this is a perfect example of you can do what you want within your means and enjoy it. I mean, I put together something pretty unique. Yes, it's, it's not a Gibson, it's not Alex's, uh, you know, uh, you know, guitar, but um, it's mine. <laughs> and it sounds really good. It's as close as I'm going to get to it. Someday, yes, I might have the money that I will buy that guitar. But for now, it's this one, boys and girls. <laughs> well, about this guitar, um, I believe it's it's a few thousand dollars, Alex Lyson's guitar. It's more um, than a few thousand dollars. <laughs> it, it, you don't have to give exact price, but is this a thousand, under a thousand? You know what, it's an under, I, I, I put it together for under a thousand dollars. I mean, under a thousand dollars. So you can, you can get, you can pretty much get the sound you want if you're willing to invest the time to sure. figure out you know, maybe it's not just about playing the guitar now, it's actually getting to know well each component of the guitar, Absolutely. be it acoustic or electric, and Absolutely. see how they work together. It's, it's, it's a lot about, you know, you do your homework. I mean, it's like when you go shopping, say you're going to buy a car. You just don't go one day and say, I'm going to buy this car, and you go to a dealer and say, that's it, I'll take this one. No, you usually have done your homework before you get to the dealer. You know what type of car you want, you, want, you know what engine you want, what body style, even the interior, the motor, all those details you've already worked out in your head and you already know what you want. Same thing with a guitar, there's no reason why you can't do your research and thank God for the internet because everything's at your fingertips yeah. and available and there's a me. wealth of information. I mean, sometimes I, 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 I'm one that doesn't sleep very much and it's probably because of the internet because I'm always researching uh, you know, who's doing what, when, how and, and, and then how I can imitate it within my means. Like, and there's some things that, yeah, I can, um, you know, I, can, I can afford to do and some things that you know, I'd rather not afford to do it. Um, but it's possible if you do your research, yeah, you know, you research, again, pickups, you know, what body style, type of woods, even the electronics on it, there's, there's all these components, and yeah, you can say, hey, by the time you do that, you could have bought that guitar, no, not always, not always, you can really put something together reasonably priced that you're really going to enjoy, and it's something that you did, it's yours, it's of your design, of your making, you can say, yes, I hope, you know, the reason this sounds this way is because I picked out the components to make it sound that way and I tweaked it to get the sound that I wanted. Sometimes I put guitars together and after I bought the pickups and I tried it, I'm like, you know what? So that, those pickups with this particular guitar doesn't work. And I'll rip them out and buy a new set of pickups. Of course, I'll sell those on eBay, but <laughs> the ones I just pulled out, but not just to recoup, <laughs> yeah, just to recoup some of the money. Uh, again, thank God for eBay. Shout out to eBay also <laughs> and Craigslist. Um, and, and you know, there's no reason. This is it's this is meant to be fun. At least for me, it's yeah. it's, it's a it's a. I don't. I'm not a professional musician. You know, I have a full time job, and and I do this for stress relief and for fun. I mean, I remember playing in some clubs recently in Colombia. They've asked me, you know, how much do we pay you? I'm like, pay? You want to pay me? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm doing this just because I'm enjoying it. For me, it's stress relief from corporate America. Um, yeah. So it's something that I enjoy. And, it's, and again, there's no reason why. Um, it's not that hard to, to actually put together or, or redesign. You know, you can take a guitar you have and just change the pickups and you have a new guitar. Yeah. You can take a guitar and just change the, the type of strings that you use and you have a new sounding guitar. So, you know, little nuances or little things like that you can do and you can really um, enjoy, enjoy, you know, re, re-enjoy or re-look into, you know, what it is that got you into music and the sounds that you want and just have fun. Guitar is about having, music is about having fun. Absolutely. And it, in that um, vein, it's similar to a drummer who's starting up and getting to learn their equipment. Um, obviously, the readers of this website know. I mean, there's many things that go into the sound of a, of a drum, be it, you know, the tuning of the heads, the type of shell, the size of the shell, the cymbals. You have the different uh, metals in the cymbal, the sizes of the cymbals. Um, even the stands that they're on, even the, the different type of sticks and the way that you get to know your instrument is by fiddling. Um, Absolutely. You, you get down in there, you learn how to tune it. it. You might be looking for the sound of your favorite artist, but probably by the time you get to where you want, it's more of a sound you like because you got into it. So. With guitars, it's the same thing. And, and I, I, you know, absolutely correct. We we had this discussion before we started the interview, and um, you're like, why so many guitars? And then we started talking about each one of my guitars, and, and I said, and I, and then we spoke about drumming. We we're like, okay, you know, that drumming is the same thing. There's so many different variables that you can tweak to get the different sounds. Um, 
same thing with guitar. There's so many different variables. Is but you have to get into it. Though. You have to. You have to do your your homework. You have to investigate. I mean, it, it, when it's a hobby, you actually have fun investigating. It's actually fun. It's not like going to school and I have to do the homework. I have a research paper. It's not like that. It's something that you enjoy. You do it, and, and you take the time to do it, and you you know, and you become quite you know fluent. And it's like learning a language. You become fluent in it. Yeah. So you have all these guitars now. Um, you probably may want to expand because you're always looking for something now. Do you get surprised um, when you hear something and you say, well, I think I want a guitar that sounds like that. And maybe you start not maybe directly looking for a guitar, but you keep you have your feelers out for when you might see something. Or when you're thinking about getting another guitar, how do you, what's your mindset with that? Um, when I decide to get another guitar, it has to be something, it has to cover a sound that I don't already have. It has to be something unique and say, well, wow, I, I don't have that sound covered. I, even with all of the effects and the amplification and yeah, the different... Yeah, even it's funny, I, I've come to the... I actually have 28 guitars, folks. Uh, I don't have any... I probably... Pro That's get 28 of, yeah, guitars. I'd probably get a couple more if I had room to hang them up in my wall, but I actually don't. But I feel actually... To, I'm to the point where I feel very comfortable with the guitars that I have. Awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> my wife hopes so also. Uh, but, you know, with the, with the amplifiers I have, with the effects, I mean, I have enough variation that I could spend a whole lifetime just fiddling with what I have now. Yeah. Um, so if, if I decide to get another piece of gear, it has to bring um, something unique to my sound that I don't already have. Um, Is that getting harder to do? Yeah, the more stuff you have, yeah, it becomes harder to do. Again, you know, if you want to, if you really want to peg certain sounds and certain songs and everything, yeah, if, you know, you can say, well, I know that guitarist used a Les Paul, but if this type of amp, you know, and this type of sound effect, yeah, if, if I really wanted to get that detailed, yeah, then I, that would force me to buy that equipment. But I think with what I have right now, I have enough flexibility to get as close as I can get within reason. Within reason. Again, when I play, they're not going to say, hey, that's Eddie Van Halen playing. It would be nice. But, or, you know, Steve Howe, whoever, depending on the type of music, or, you know, Alex. Doesn't matter, um, you know. Uh, again, I can. I think I have enough variation. I can nail sounds pretty close, pretty close. Great. So, uh, one other thing, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. If someone's just starting out, you know, saying you know they picked the guitar as their instrument, sure. Um, and they see someone like you who has a lot of guitars, um, they could get overwhelmed. You know, maybe like, sure. you know, is this what is this what it is, or you know, how do you make sure? If, like let's say it was a, you know like a relative a young like my nephew or whatever what do you what would you what advice would you give them to make sure that that like or that you know love for the guitar grows instead of maybe them getting discouraged afterwards sure I, I think you, again you have to do your homework a little bit first you have to figure out what is it I'm trying to play what kind of music obviously you're not gonna buy an electric guitar if you want to play classical music so you know it's like do your homework what type of music are you trying to that you enjoy playing because obviously you want to start playing an instrument and start playing music that means something to you. So if, if, if for example, you know, all of a sudden you, you want to get a, maybe a Jimi Hendrix sound, well, don't get a Les Paul, you know, or a Les Paul type guitar. Get a more of a Stratocaster type guitar. Um, and you don't have to stop, start with an expensive guitar. You can start off with an imitation. Once you get good enough, you'll know what you want to get and you know which road you want to go, to, go uh, down. The thing is, you have to start somewhere. So start. You, you can't measure something unless you have something to measure it against. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to start somewhere. So, um, I mean, uh, heck, unless you have a lot of money, then why spend all the money? Get something that comes close to imitating the sound that you want. And then from there, you'll know. You'll, you'll start learning whether, you know, what, what type of guitar you want, what type of pickups, and what kind of app you want. To, that'll, that'll, be, that'll start developing with your knowledge of what you're trying to do. But it helped also to have guy like Mitch, your buddy, so someone sure. who knows about that kind of thing, like maybe the hardware side of it, although, I mean, he plays too, but um, the hardware side is like, oh, you know what, if you want to play like that, this is what I suggest. Yeah, I, I've been very fortunate where, where I've had a good mentor, and um, this is the guy that helps me, you know, put together all these, these guitars. Um, he's a luthier also, and uh, he's been very instrumental into, you know, sometimes I know what I want, and sometimes... I can talk about what I want. I just don't know how to get how to put it together. And speaking to Mitch, somebody like him that's very experienced, and he's he's 
done a lot of custom guitars for a lot of famous guitars that are out there playing today, which names I can't tell you. Uh, if he interviews him, I'll let him say it. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Mitch uh, speak about that himself. Uh, but, um, you know, he, he's good at listening to what sound I'm trying to, what, what I want from my guitar, what is it that I want. And uh, he'll translate it in, into the physical aspect, which is, okay, we're going to use this guitar, this type of guitar with this, this type of pickups and this type of electronics. He's been instrumental. Um, he's been a very good mentor. He's been, and it's good to have somebody, um, you know, obviously, you know, visit your, your music store, you know, right. just, right. just get with other people that are, that, that are in love with the same thing you're in love with. And, and then you'll find commonalities and you'll learn from their experiences, they'll learn from yours, and you'll start growing as a musician. And again, this is something that you do for fun. So it's just, everything you do is for the love of the art. And it's, it, it, it'll be fun and second nature and you'll learn. You'll learn. Great. Well... Chris, I want to appreciate the time you spent talking about this. I know that was something that we've been wanting to do for, for a long time, actually, but since we're separated by a state or two, it makes it a little difficult. So Sometimes by more than a state or two, yeah. maybe by a continent. Yeah, exactly. So thanks very much, Chris. Thank you very and much. We'll, we'll be doing Pleasure. it again, I'm sure. Yeah. And again, Happy play. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's Chris, Al Chris Alvarado, um, guitarist, enthusiast. And we appreciate his time that he spent with us. And we hope it was interesting to you drummers out there too, because it's, you know some of us drummers may want to play guitar now as well. So to the drummers, I say keep on drumming and also keep on strumming. <laughs>